Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, a brother sent me this passage recently, and it's a good passage to meditate on, so I want to go over it briefly. I looked at a little bit of these verses on Study Light to get a little deeper understanding. I'm not going to go into great detail here, but let's go over it briefly. And uh, this section is titled God's Everlasting Love in the e Sword. It's the end of Romans chapter 8. It's Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And it starts off, What shall we, what shall we then say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? Well, this isn't like a hypothetical question, meaning that, you know, it's possible God can't be for us. No, for all believers, God is for us, and no one can be against us because God is for us. And so it's more of a uh, rhetorical question that Paul often uh, uses to make a statement in that, you know, God is for us, and therefore no one can be against us. Uh, and so... Uh, that basically doesn't mean that uh, nobody, uh, you know, th that the Christians aren't persecuted or anything like that. But it means, uh, you know, he's talking about God's love and he's going to go on and say, you know, who can separate us from God's love? You know, ultimately, um, we are victorious in Christ. And so no one can conquer us and separate us from God's love. Romans chapter 8, verse 32, it says, He that spared not his own Son. Now we see the distinction between two persons in the Godhead, the Father and the Son. He is the Father that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. Okay, uh, the Son, the Christ, Jesus, was put to death for us. And um, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This was a little bit confusing to me. It ties up a little bit, but says, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So, how shall he, the Father, not with him, the Son, also freely give us all things? So, what he was saying is that he didn't spare his own Son. He delivered him up for us all. And he's saying, how shall he not with him, meaning that he gave us his Son. So, how shall he not also freely give us all things? And so... As the, the commentator said, that this is, um, it's like comparing the, the greater to the lesser, saying that, you know, if he gave us Christ, which is all, basically, how shall he not, how shall he not freely give us all things, you know, um, when he, he didn't even spare his own son. And so, we have all things freely in the Lord, uh, you know, without price, and uh, it means, basically, you know, that we get to be uh, heirs, and that uh, we we get the spiritual gifts of the Lord and, and the blessings. So, um, Romans eight th eight thirty three: Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Now, in the Calvinists, see the elect, they think that um, <clears throat> that believers. Uh, Believers are believers because they were elected of God to be believers. But the Bible teaches that the believers who have chosen to believe are the elect, basically. So it's backwards with Calvinism. It is God that justifies. Okay, No one can lay anything to charge the charge of us. You know, God is uh, the judge. God is the one who justifies. And those of us who are, who are in Christ, God is for us. God justified us. Just as Abraham was justified by his faith, so are we. Who is he that condemneth? Rhetorical question, basically. It's no one, you know. And who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Rhetorical question. And you see how many questions he has here. How many question marks? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Uh, so, speaking of the resurrection of Christ, uh, he was put to death, but he did. Uh, he was resurrected, and uh, we have victory in his resurrection. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? There's really a lot there in that verse, talking about the resurrection, you know, his death and his resurrection, and uh, he's at the right hand of God. You know, his his place. Um, as you know, reigning with the Father, and uh, and He makes intercession for us. 
Uh, so there's a lot there. Doctrine of Christ. Um, and so, you know, the Son of God is, is equal with the Father in his authority and, and in his rule. And, and he also intercedes for us. And so he's at the right hand of God, and he's equal with God in his authority. And he intercedes for us. So who can condemn us when, when we have that uh, for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Okay, and, and these are just, this is just a list of things that, that could be more. And basically, you know, the idea is that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Now he says, as it is written in verse 6, this is a call back to Psalm 44, verse 22. It says, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And so it's talking about, you know, the saints in the Old Testament. Uh, and it goes for us and for them at that time. How they were persecuted so much, uh, you know, as a fact that uh, they were persecuted, put to death for their faith. But did those things separate them from the love of Christ? No, they did not. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, he says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so, he... Uh, He's referencing, when he says nay, he's referencing back to verse 35 where it says, shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword separate us from the love of Christ? And in verse 37 he says nay. They won't separate us from the love of Christ. And all these things, in our persecutions, in our tribulations, in our distress, in our famine, in our nakedness, we are more than conquerors. And so seemingly in this life, even though, you know, we might be down and out. Um, in reality, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through him that loved us. And um, and he, he puts that uh, verse in the middle there, verse 36, that call back to Psalm 44, 22. Uh, you know, just calling back to the scripture, how it was written, you know, in history that, you know, God's people were... Uh, have been persecuted, you know, all along, and you know it's a fact that uh, that Christians are persecuted, and um, even so, we are more than conquerors. And uh, <laughs> say, uh, what was the? I don't know. I just think of uh, there's a Christian death metal song that's. <laughs> It's called More Than Conquerors, and I just think about that whenever I see that. I can't remember what the band is called, but uh, that just escapes my mind. But I love that, you know, that we are more than, than conquerors. Um, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing can separate us, nothing can be against us, nothing can condemn us, uh, nothing can lay charge to us. And, you know, this list of things, he's just expanding on the idea that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, he is fully persuaded. And I think, you know, when he says, nor height, nor depth, and that, that kind of speaks of the, uh, maybe kind of speaks of the omnipresence of God. But basically the whole general idea is that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And, uh, nor any other creature, nor death, nor life, nor angels. Nothing. And that's such a great promise that we have here. That Paul is persuaded of that. And we need to be persuaded of that. We need to remember reality that we are um, sons of God, you know, through adoption, that we are his children, and that we are blessed, and that we are victorious, that we are conquerors. We need to praise God every day for that. We need to be thankful and grateful and, and keep that in our memory. We need to encourage one another with these um, realities that we 
have. So I'm sure there's a lot more that could be said about this little passage, but uh, it's just a really great passage. So thank you guys. God bless.